Everybody, we are back. My next guest is going to be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey this weekend. Please welcome a very funny man, Greg Giraldo. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, Conan. Uh, good to be here. Uh, what can I tell you? I, uh, my wife and I just had a son about a month ago. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's very exciting, but it's also incredibly hard, man. It's really, really tough. You know, and I was saying this to somebody, and the guy goes, yeah, I know, I don't have any kids, but I have a dog. So I know what it's like. People always want to compare their dogs to your kid. You don't know what it's like to have a kid because you have a dog. First of all, nobody has a dog because they were too drunk to pull out. All right, that's the first thing. That's the first thing. Nobody's putting a poodle through college because they couldn't control themselves for that one split second. And I have another kid, he's, uh, he's two and a half, so he was freaking out about the new baby, you know, and, uh, and that was tough on him, and he kept saying, no one baby brother, no one baby brother, you know. And I didn't even know how to handle it, so I was like, well, you see, if you had learned to speak better, maybe we wouldn't have had to replace you. <laughs> With that kind of command of the English language, you couldn't expect us to pin all our hopes and dreams on you, could you? <laughs> and I would tell him, though, I wasn't all mean, I would tell him, I said, we're still gonna love you, just not as much. <laughs> And we bought him a uh, fish tank. You don't have to worry about him. We bought him a fish tank so he'd stop worrying about his new baby brother and start worrying about his dead fish. <laughs> Folks, none of this really happened. You can all relax for a second. The kid's fine. <laughs> it's important for kids to feel that life is short. I think it keeps them focused. Now, <laughs> cloning, that's another option. Pretty soon you're going to be able to clone babies. So you'll be able to have a baby without having to have sex with a person who will eventually suck the will to live right out of you. <laughs> And I'm in favor of it. Too late for me, but, you know, maybe for my kids. They could clone themselves, have a little uh, baby. That'll be good. The other thing that worries me is the people that are in involved in the cloning now. Look at the people. First of all, you have this fertility doctor in Italy, and his big claim to fame was that last year he helped a 72-year-old woman give birth to a baby boy. 72 years old. Now, I don't know what makes a person gay, but I would think that nursing on 72-year-old breasts would have to be a factor. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but that's my guess. Then you got the Raelians, these Raelians, they're, they're a cult, or they're not a cult, they think they're a religion where everyone wears spacesuits. And they, they believe that all humans are clones of extraterrestrials, which sounds insane, but then again, is it really any crazier than what we believe in every other religion? Look at the things we all believe, every religion's got crazy stuff. I'm Catholic, the Virgin Mary, we have a whole religion based on a woman who really stuck to her story. You know, I talk. Then, you got the Islamic extremists, right? They believe that if you kill in the name of Allah, you get 72 virgins. That sounds crazy to me. How did, you know, that's an ancient, uh, you know, text. Maybe it was misinterpreted somewhere along the line. Maybe it's not 72 virgins. Maybe it's a 7'2 Persian. Is that worth it? <laughs> I don't watch uh, TV anymore, almost at all. It just depresses me. All of it just depresses me. The reality shows, not American Idol, that one I, of course, TiVo, but <laughs> all the other... <laughs> But all the other ones, I hate them. They just bring out the worst in human nature, and people are proud of it. It's, I think it all started with these daytime talk shows where all of a sudden people stop feeling ashamed about anything. I mean, th there was a time in our history before Ricky Lake and, and all those shows where if you got pregnant and you didn't know who the father was, you thought, wow, I'm a whore. <laughs> I had sex with too many dudes last month. How did I lose track? I should have kept better records. I should have had him sign in or something. This is embarrassing. <laughs> And you'd be ashamed of yourself, and you'd come up with a lie, something to tell the kid. You know, your father was a hero. He died in the war. It was so sad. You know, and then your kid would grow up and think, wait, we never went to war with Holland in the 70s. But at least, at least you tried. You didn't go on Maury Povich and spin a big wheel to see which toothless mullet head was your baby daddy. That's all I'm saying. That MTV Cribs, I can't watch that. That's, that's, first of all, if you're younger than the people, they show you their rich people's houses. If you're younger than them, great, because you think, hey, if I play my cards right, uh, you know. But if you're older than the people in those shows, it's the saddest, most depressing show on the planet. There's nothing worse than going on a tour of some 19-year-old punk from a boy band's indoor ice hockey rink, you know. Meanwhile, I'm sitting on my bed slash sofa. Oh, good to see O-Town doing so well. I really knew they'd make it. They're very talented. And they always tell you how many bathrooms they have in their house. My crib's got 18 bathrooms. They're all made of imported Italian marble from a 14th century monastery. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm pissing in the sink because my crazy wife's locked herself in the bathroom for two and a half hours, you know. She won't come out till I admit that I have a drinking problem. Well, it's going to be a long wait, pumpkin, so hang in there.
And when you get out, you might want to watch a little MTV Cribs, because I know it's ludicrous as bitches ain't busting his chops about his hobby. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Take it easy. Thanks a lot. Very funny. Greg Garoppolo, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, that's our show. Do want to thank all my guests. Greg Giraldo, funny as always. Thank, thank you very much for thank doing you. it. Hilarious. Big thanks to Simon Cowell for stopping by. He's such thank a good you. sport. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck with the new season. Big thanks to Claire Danes for being here. And, of course, Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg 7. Stay tuned for Last Call with Carson Daly. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hypocrisy, arrogance, greed, the movie Kangaroo Jack. That's right, these are more and more likely to be why foreigners hate America. I, I'm sorry, have you? Just, just cut to a tight shot again of Kangaroo Jack. I just, isn't he adorable? I didn't think so. He looks like Joe Camel to me. There's a subliminal penis in there, and it's making me want to buy a cigarette. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs>